All right, Joel Klatt, Fox Sports College Football. He'll be all over our draft coverage as he always does. He's got one of those thick binders full of information and notes. Like, look at that. That thing, that's called homework right there. So, okay, let's start with this. <laughs> that's you, right. have, you have the number one pick. You're Carolina offensive coach, Frank Wright. He's a polisher. Did it with Cars- uh, Did it with uh, Wentz, Phillip. Uh, did it with Luck. He tends to be a guy that if you're not a finished product, he can make you more efficient. Who would be your number one pick? I, I would take Bryce Young. He's my best quarterback on the board. Um, I know that he, he's not the guy that needs the most polish by any uh, stretch of the imagination. And I understand that Bryce Young is small in, in stature, but his game is so well suited for the NFL, Colin. He's such a great distributor. He understands the schematics of the game as well as anybody and controls that from the pocket pre-snap. Then he manipulates the pocket as well as anybody that I've uh, uh, evaluated over the last couple of years. But here's what I love most about him is that he's got this this uncanny ability to make the, the biggest plays at the most important time. And he's one of the only reasons that they were in some of those games that they were in this last year. They did not have the wide receiver core that they've had in previous years. And he was having to go out there and will his team down the field. He did it against Texas in a win, kept him in the game against Tennessee, same against LSU, both on the road. This guy's hyper accurate. And I think he comes in and he makes your franchise viable. And he's the type of guy that I could see being a playoff quarterback pretty early in his career. Any quarterback of the top four, there's too many red flags. Is there anyone that worries you? You know, Levis is the one that worry, worries me of those top four quarterbacks. I've actually got him. If you if you go and, and check out my top 50 list, he's all the way down in the 30s. The other guys, I have all of them up in the top 10, including Anthony Richardson. Um, mainly because w- when I watch Levis's games, there's far too many turnover-worthy plays. He's just careless with the football. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of Jameis Winston when he came out of Florida State. Remember all the interceptions that Winston had, and that has certainly perpetuated itself in his career in the National Football League. And I think it's one of the main reasons why he has suffered from a lack of consistency in his career. That's that's what I see with Levis. So that's the one that worries me the most. If I was one of those teams in the top five, six, ten, and I'm looking at a quarterback and all of a sudden it's Levis, I, I think that I would pass at that point in the top ten. Maybe later in the first round, that's fine. The other guys just either are polished and ready to go like Bryce Young, hyper accurate like CJ Stroud, or have unbelievable upside like Anthony Richardson and and that kind of take some of that risk and it puts it in the corner because I know that I could potentially get a guy that could be the best player on the field in two or three years. So Jalen Carter came in a little overweight. You've got some, I don't know if you call them character issues. There's stuff there with Jalen Carter. I We've talked on this show. I think he's probably, when I watched him play, he was the most dominant player in this draft. Um, would you draft him? Would you be concerned about drafting him all you know now? Okay, so I would draft him, and I would be concerned. So bo- both of those things. Um, you know, and I think you've said this several times, your production and your baggage are, are rated against one another. If you don't produce and you bring a lot of baggage, you're not going to be on the team. Or you're a distraction, you're not going to be on the team, you're not going to be picked. If you produce, teams will put up with quite a lot. Um, in terms of baggage, off the field, distractions, whatever it is, okay, lack of focus, however you want to call it, red flags. And he produces. Yeah. Colin, he is one of the best interior defensive linemen we've had coming into the National Football League in the last four or five years, right? So at, at that point, someone's going to take him. It's going to be high in the draft, and they, they're going to hope that they have the structure, the veterans, and, and everything that they need around him to keep him um, basically – to not be a distraction <laughs> and to keep him outside uh, of those distractions off the field, to keep him in line as far as his weight goes on the field. He's fantastic, and he's going to be a really, really good player. The question is, is how focused is he going to be once he becomes an NFL superstar? So I've watched a lot of Will Anderson at Alabama. Probably saw him, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten times minimum. Um, he's obviously good. But um, does he project as good as Aiden Hutchison or uh, a Chase Young? Like, Mm. just because you're the best edge rusher in this draft, that doesn't necessarily mean 
your comps are, you know, we've had some really good edge rushers in the last five or six drafts. Yeah. We've had Boses. So, I mean, what, what is he? That's a great question. I think I put him in line with all of those players, and it's because you have to – it's almost the exact opposite discussion that we just had with Jalen Carter. He is everything that you would want in a, a potential leader and, and captain of a defense. I love his versatility. He can get after the quarterback. There's no doubt. He's also really strong in run defense. Um, he's the type of guy that was the alpha of a defense that – tries to build alphas in, in Alabama. They kept telling me uh, during the course of the year that he was in the same vein as all the great defenders that they have uh, come before him, in particular because of his leadership. They didn't have to say much at practice because of what he would do and bring the defense together, and then he would go out there and produce. This last season, he was the focal point of so many double teams and triple teams and the entire protection scheme of the opposing offense. I think that's why his production wasn't quite what we expected it to be in this season. But I, I firmly believe that Will Anderson can and will be in a defensive player of the year discussion within his career, probably within the four, first four or six years of his career. I think he's that good, and he's that good off the field as well. That's why I have him as my number one player. I think we forget how dominant he was a couple years ago in college football. You can make the argument he's been the best player in college football over the course of the last two years, and, and that's the reason I have him as my number one defender. Um, I'm not a huge comp. Combine guy, it's it's a little filtered and edited. It's the Instagram of football where everybody looks perfect, and it's not it's not authentic enough. You can get fooled on it. But if there was somebody in the combine, Joel, that you came out and said, "Boy, I thought it was Christian Gonzalez at Oregon. I thought <laughs> when he, he just looks the part. He has that Vernon Davis yeah. thing like 15 years ago, where you're like, yeah, that's that's going to be a great player. But was there somebody for you? You came out of the combine and went, oh. That helped him. Well, I was a lot of the corners, you know, just because of their length and stature, Gonzalez being one of them. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head there. How about a guy that it's not because of a blazing fast 40 or, or you know, a great vertical jump. Didn't Jackson Smith and Jigba just kind of remind everyone that it's like, oh, yeah, you were the best receiver on a core of receivers that included Garrett Wilson uh, as well as Chris Olave. And, and so for, for me, coming out of this combine time, I've sensed that Jackson Smith and Jigba's stock has risen quite steadily. If you go back to the end of the season, nobody was talking about him. No one had him as the top wide receiver in the draft. And now all of a sudden you get time to go back and look at the tape. Go back and look at what he does from the slot. Understand what he was and what he meant to a team that had those two players that had remarkable rookie years in the NFL. And you start to remember like, okay, this guy is easily a guy that can go out there and lead the league in receptions pretty early in his career. He understands spacing. He's highly explosive. He showed that by topping all wide receivers in the quickness drills, the three cone, the shuttle. And, and for me, Jackson Smith and Jigba is a guy that has risen quite steadily. I won't be surprised if he gets taken in the top 15, maybe even the top 12 in the draft, because people are reminded during this process that he was and is the best player uh, on the field when he's there, even with a guy like Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson. By the way, the herd will continue on the Fox Sports app. Many of you will leave us to go watch Turkey, Croatia uh, face off. So I, I want to get into one more question here. Um, B. Mm -hmm. John Robinson is a running back, and I'm okay taking a star running back if you think he is uh, Ezekiel Elliott. I wouldn't assign Zeke to a massive contract two years early, but I've said this before. Not everybody has to be a 401K. I don't have to be in a relationship with you forever. If you can make my football team dynamic for four years, I'm a GM, I'm a coach. I, that's a long time, a lot of runway, right? This is a quick league. Seven coaches get fired annually. So I would take him. Um, would you, does he, in your eyes, is he a first round running back? Uh, and is there a team you think he could land with? Yeah, I, I do. I think, and, and, and I like your analogy. I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you. The thing that killed the Cowboys wasn't that they com that Zeke Elliott wasn't what he was. It was that they gave him a huge contract. Part of their 
beauty early in his career was that they were able to spend on the offensive line and in other areas, which what which is what made Dak Prescott viable. Love his agility and his makeup. I, I would remind everyone that he was the best running back in college football, and he had an abysmal offensive line. Yeah. The last few years, Texas has been really poor up front, and yeah. he was still a great player. That bodes well for me as I'm projecting him into the next level. So I would absolutely take him. And here's where I would just throw, throw it out. I don't know if he'll drop all the way to this to this point but I, I keep looking at Detroit with four picks in the in the first two rounds and the first 55 picks in the draft and I start thinking to myself like boy they're gonna have the ability with one of those first rounders in particular that pick at 18 I believe where they could take a guy like Bijan and still help their defense with three other picks in the first 55 so that's a luxury that a team like Detroit might have they can give Goff more weapons they were pretty good offensively certainly need help on the defensive side but maybe Bijan lands himself in Detroit you know it's funny I said this with Jamar Chase a couple years ago Jamar Chase was a professional football player still going to college classes Bijan Robinson when I watched him this year I'm like oh that's a professional running back he would be one of the top five NFL running backs he just has to get through college in the in basketball, it's a one and done sport. Football, there's three years. Very rarely, maybe once or twice a draft, you see a guy and you're like, "Oh, Jamar Chase, he's better than 99 percent of the NFL." Like Bijan to me is just kind of Ladanian Tomlinson. Like he'll he'll do everything. He'll car- he could carry your offense. I mean, I love Jonathan Taylor. I think he's Jonathan Taylor with better fluidity moves better I, I think well and he catches it way better remember Taylor struggled catching the ball at Wisconsin he wasn't even on the field on third down until his senior year whereas Bijan is not just like oh he can catch it he's a weapon in the passing game so you give him to any quarterback and and now you've got something offensively I agree with you he's he's ready I would just add right now like we're about to see another guy play another year of college football who would be the top wide receiver in the draft, probably selected number three or number four overall, and that's Marvin Harrison Jr. So we're seeing it again next year in college football with the wide receiver from Ohio State. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.